accurate as well. If you would like to um, understanding the parameters of my ruling, provide some questions that you believe should appropriately be asked. I'm happy to consider those. Um, and it may be that there are, I mean, you can absolutely, again, ask him about the um, the immunity grant and the, you know, even right now, whether he is only doing this because it's avoiding jail for him. That's fine. You, you could explore that completely. All right. Um, so why did you then change your tone? Okay, I, I understand your argument, and I am not making my ruling in any sort of an effort to protect Judge Glanville. Um, I do not believe it is relevant to the issues for this jury to determine. Um, with regard to whether Mr. Copeland's testimony between the 7th and the 10th was, I'm sorry, between the, what, the 10th and the 12th, um, was impacted by the ex parte on the 10th. I asked everybody, do we want to do the entirety of Mr. Copeland's testimony over? And everybody said, no, we want what got testified to between the 7th and the 12th at 3 p.m. So y'all had the opportunity to have it all done over and you chose not to do that. Um, you can ask him about the immunity and whether he'd be testifying without being ordered to, that's fine. But beyond that, the ins and outs of what happened in the ex parte with regard to whether there was a biased judge or not are, in this court's legal opinion, not relevant to these issues. And honestly, even the we need your testimony, Judge Glanville had made a determination that Mr. Copeland's testimony and compelling that testimony by an immunity grant was in the public's interest. And so the we there is Judge Glanville or can very easily be understood to be Judge Glanville saying we the public and not we, me, and the state. So I appreciate your proffer, um, but my ruling stands. Okay. Also, that reminds me that with regard to cross-examination, I know, Mr. Steele, you had at one point um, suggested an interest in cross-examining Mr. Copeland as to everything that went on during the ex parte. And some of that is no longer relevant. Um, so anything, I mean, if you want to cross about things that the state said to him or that he said to the state, <clears throat> that's fine. But we don't, we have, I think both circumvented and the, the whole coercion issue and he has now been properly and correctly advised by this court and had the advice and counsel of three different attorneys that I know of. So that should no longer be an issue. And so that should no longer be relevant. Um, so I would not permit examination or testimony about that. All right. And I need the jurors to understand that Judge Glanville, I will make it clear. I will make it clear. It is I will make it clear I am excluding this honorable court, but Judge Glanville pressured him. And I will argue to the jury that Judge Glanville was biased. And that is admissible because it all happened in front of the jury. And from just Judge Glanville's demeanor, and, and I'm not here to hurt Judge Glanville. In fact, I like Judge Glanville, but I don't know what happened in this case, but I like him before this case. But the way he conducted himself to people in this courtroom, I've never really seen a judge do. So I want to ask Mr. Copeland, 
It is very important to me to explain that he was taken against his desire into Judge Glanville's chambers, that he was with Judge Glanville, Miss Hilton, his lawyer. I'll make it all perfect if I don't, you know, you could admonish me and the state can correct me, but I'm not here to, to snowball anybody. But to say that I, I can exclude statements of Judge Glanville and most importantly, the conscious or subconsciousness of this witness, because I believe, and I have not spoken with him, Your Honor, I've not spoken with his lawyer about it, but I believe that Mr. Copeland will truthfully say that he believed that Judge Glanville and the state of Georgia are one. And that comes out when Judge Glanville specifically says, and I don't remember the transfer page right now, but it's something to the effect of, we need your testimony. There's no we, nobody needs, nobody needs anybody's testimony. If he didn't want to testify, I've had witnesses tell me I'm not testifying. We subpoena them and come to court. They're held in contempt. There's nothing that the judge can do because the judge can't give um, immunity. So they can't compel the person to do it. So the person invokes their Fifth Amendment and they just leave. That, that is unfortunate, but that's a reality. There is no we. So with all that being said, I'm making an attorney proffer that if you prevent me from doing that, and Judge Glanville prevented me also already, I'm, I'm just telling you, he prevented me from cross-examining um, Agent Racy, he's an FBI agent, on misstatements made by the prosecution, knowing misstatements, knowing the prosecution, it was Ms. Hilton, knew that a gentleman who's the same last name as a court reporter entered an invalid coerced guilty plea. Judge Glanville stopped me again from getting into the truth of that matter. It's never been corrected. Um, the point I'm trying to make to you is that all came out in front of the jury. So yes, I am going to intend to do, I will follow your rule, obviously, but I will intend, I intend to cross-examine Mr. Copeland, not only what was said by Ms. Hilton, but what was said by Judge Glanville. I will be respectful. I'm not, I'm not here to, you know, throw some odd names about Judge Glam, I will just be very specific. And then if he doesn't answer my questions, I'm stuck with his answer of, I don't recall or whatever has been going on in this courtroom. But um, I don't believe that you should limit the cross-examination. I didn't, I didn't do that. You know, all that to me, that was very hurtful to me. And that, I don't mean hurtful. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, it was offensive to our law. That's how I took that. And I know what you said about it. I know what Judge Krauss said about it. I've, I look at it totally differently. I've never had a judge do that. I've never read, I've done a lot of appeals. I know you've done a lot. I've never read a judge doing that. I've never seen a prosecutor do that. So I think that the jurors are entitled to know, and I think Mr. Williams, because he's the one who, God forbid, gets sentenced if I lose, I think they are entitled to know what caused Mr. Copeland from the seventh to be locked up. The jurors saw that. They, they saw that. He was testifying. He answered maybe three questions, maybe five. He said, I'm not testifying. He invoked his fifth. The jurors were sent out, and he was gone. Jurors come out, and they're dismissed. He's just not there. We're on a long delay. I think that it is not um, irrelevant to this matter. I think it is more than relevant. I think it's probative. And this is the actual treatment by the former court and the current district attorneys of this case. Judge Whitaker is saying or said that she isn't trying to make Glanville look bad, but I think us at the channel see right through that crap. You definitely, definitely are saving that man. So the day that he retires, he can point at you and say, hey, everybody, throw your support for Judge Whitaker. But neither here nor there. <sighs> this judge has done this a couple of times. Cat and I, William said it's flip-flop. I agree with her. Some people would say, hey, man, she got a little bit of more education on the situation and that the judge, uh, Krause, her ruling basically was the one that she was referring to. She misspoke and all these things and everything like that. Let's understand something. These are supposed to be referees. If a referee, this, this, because I don't want to come off super biased. 
how it was supposed to go was this. Hey, one referee has been doing very bad in the game. He's making the right calls, but the way in which he's doing it, he can't do it that way. That was the, the premise of what Judge Krauss was saying. Is that, hey, he did stuff out of his feelings, what he actually did, the substance of what he did, no problem. But the way he handled it, that's the problem he got to go. All right. So that means that another referee could just come in and then basically resume the same game with no problem. That's what it's supposed to look like. One ref had to go, another ref came in, and everybody else is saying, and I'm not saying I agree with them or disagree with them. Everybody else is saying, nah, man, the game is already rigged. Let's restart. No, no, no. Matter of fact, just declare the people who are already up a couple of points the winners, bro. We can't finish this at all. The people have already saw the game. And since they already saw the game, they can't pretend that we weren't whooping on them. That's the idea of the whole YSL defense team is we're up. Might as well just end the game and declare us winners. Bruh, I'm telling you now. I'm not going to say it's going to happen with LaWoody, but... Mark my words. I don't know when, but the minute that somebody, matter of fact, this is what I'll say. I'll say when. The minute that somebody actually starts answering the damn questions about Thug and everybody and starts to say some things, we're going to start hearing objections from Brian Steele or from anybody else. And when we hear them in our minds, we're going to think to ourselves, absolutely, freaking Lully, you should sustain the objection. To say no overruled there's going to be moments where people's mouths are going to open wide enough that you thought you could fit a goddamn turkey ham in there I mean, turkey ham uh thanksgiving ham in there sorry about that uh, I, meant to, uh, I got turkey bacon on my mind my fault so the judge does she know what she's doing for the most part yes but what we keep on seeing is you keep on saying to the damn state hey if you don't do this Gonna be some problems. But they keep doing it. Ain't no problems. It's the equivalent of somebody saying, Ooh, your mom says she gonna whoop your ass. Alright. And your mom says she gonna whoop your ass. Alright. But you keep on doing it and your mom don't whoop your ass. You're gonna keep on doing it. These hard deadlines, eventually, I don't know what motion they can file. I had to look it up, man, and I'm sorry for not looking it up. But they had to eventually start filing motions against this judge, demanding hard deadlines for the damn state because we're all of the mindset, at least I am, and I'm fairly certain you guys are. Once the state brought this case against Jeffrey Williams, they already had all the evidence that they needed. They already had it all set up. They should have already been ready to go. This is bullshit. It just is. Let's just tell the truth. This is bullshit. This should not be. You should never charge somebody and you ain't got all your ducks in order if you're the state. If you watch Star Trek, this is what it's supposed to be. Cardassian law. That actually we're guilty and we're going to prove how guilty we are. That's the state. The state is going to prove how guilty you actually are and thoroughly go through and sift through the process and show everybody. And we haven't even seen that. We've seen BS on top of BS on top of BS on top of BS on top of BS. Matter of fact, somebody pointed out in the comments, and my bad for not even giving them their credit. Bruh, he never said, Thug told me to do that. That's never been said in these interrogation tapes. And I think that's why Paul Howard did not go ahead and freaking basically prosecute this case. Because it's not good. Young Thug actually should not be in here. Shouldn't be in none of this stuff. A lot of them shouldn't be in this stuff. But you know what? Unfortunately, you get in trouble with the company that you keep. And I believe this is what's happening to Jeffrey Williams. Because at the end of the day, we're not really seeing anything. They keep on saying all this bullshit about, oh, we got videotapes of these crimes and all this crap and everything like that happening. And we've yet to see it. All we've seen is pictures. The state damn sure don't know what the hell they talking about. You brought on a 
gang expert of over 12 years who did not know the word Damu said damn move. You brought on this damn moron who didn't even know that bruh. That's not a... <laughs> That's not a thing that you just said because you switched it up. She, remember, the Lil Woody comment was originally about Lil Woody shooting up Lil Wayne's tour bus. That's what it was about. Go back and look it up. Y'all gonna be like, hell no. Nah. Then they switched it up and said, oh, it's about, it's about Donovan Thomas. So how the hell are we supposed to look at all of this crap and then go, you know what? The state has a case. To me, to me, and probably to y'all too. This just looked like, let's throw a bunch of shit on the wall and see what sticks. Because if we're being fair, it sounds like Lil Woody ass should be involved in this goddamn Rico. And it definitely sounds like Adrian being Mr. the first original, Mr. I don't recall, his ass should have been in here for sure. Just those two witnesses alone should have been on this damn Rico. Because... Y'all charged Gunner for what reason? There was no reason, and I'm, I'm kind of going off with a little tangent, but hear me out, please. They charged Gunner with basically being around Young Thug when Young Thug got pulled over with guns, and somebody calling Gunner on the phone, drunk as hell, said, hey, bruh, you know I'll kill any nigga over you, bruh. That made Gunner the number two person in the YSL Rico. Those are the two charges. If you don't believe me, Trust me, go look up the whole entire Rico and literally you can hear me audio book read it for you. Those are Gunner's charges. So how the hell was Gunner a part of the goddamn corrupt <laughs> corrupt influence organization, corrupt organizations that and Adrian Bean and Kenneth Copeland weren't? This is pretty damn dumb because at the end of the day, how it was supposed to go was Lil Woody was supposed to be locked up and given a chance to basically sign that plea agreement and then double back. Not this man living his best life and then y'all turn around and snatch his ass. That's not how it's supposed to go. So if I'm looking at this, when I'm Brian Steele or anybody on the YSL group, when we're doing this in closing, I'm gonna ask that question to the jury. I'm gonna pose, pardon me. I'm gonna pose that question to the jury. Hey, if the state was so good at their jobs, if they were so worried about keeping people safe, why the hell wasn't Kenny Copeland arrested with everybody else? He had more BS going on than everybody else. You brought in Kenny Copeland for the shooting of somebody while defending his child, questioned him, but all everybody else isn't in the YSL shit. Now, granted, what well, cat was YFN, but still. Y'all share to keep your people aware. Subscribe to the bills to notify. And I'll catch you in the next one. Let me know y'all thoughts on this because at the end of the day, that judge is flip flopping pretty damn bad. And it's going to come back to bite her in her ass. I'm, I'm not sorry for what I'm about to say. Judge Whitaker, you do realize you are setting yourself up. Now, she ain't watching this. I can guarantee. I don't believe Judge Whitaker watches my page at all. So I can say that firmly. You don't know what the hell you're doing right now. And it seems to me that you are over your skis. But y'all let me know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Have y'all seen some improprieties? Some BS that she was supposed to do that she didn't do? She's holding on to stuff that she shouldn't be holding on to. Because my biggest gripe is you keep on giving these ladies all type of chances with this goddamn discovery and Brady material to the point where you made them take a goddamn instructional video on how to be a lawyer one-on-one when they've been doing it over a decade plus. That's insane to me. The fuck?